joining me again today and welcome back to my channel. Today I am going to be reviewing Just Take My Heart by Mary Higgins Clark, a interesting mystery thriller novel that is full of suspense and intrigue. A quick summary of the book, Just Take My Heart is a suspense story by Mary Higgins Clark which follows the murder of a Broadway actress named Natalie Raines. The primary suspect is her ex-husband, Greg Aldrich, and the story follows the events of the trial in which the primary prosecutor is a woman named Emily Wallace. Emily is not certain of Greg's guilt, but must continue on with the case, and it's filled with a bunch of suspenseful twists and turns, as one would expect from Mary Higgins Clark and a surprise interesting twist ending. So my makeup look for today is going to primarily be a classic smoky eye. I felt like, oh gosh, <laughs> just dropping things everywhere. I felt like that worked well for a suspense novel to have a makeup look that was equally shrouded in dark and dramatic shades. So without further ado, I will get started on the review. If you have not read the book, there will be spoilers ahead. Just so you know, I will not spoil who the murderer ends up being, just because I feel like that kind of ruins the fun of a suspense novel if you know absolutely everything going into it. But there will be at least some spoilers ahead. If you have not read the book, then the review may not make as much sense, just because I am obviously going to be discussing bits and pieces of the book. Um, that being said, Let's get started. All right, so first things first, this as a suspense novel is definitely, oh my gosh, I cannot stop dropping things today. I'm so sorry. Um, as I stated, this is a suspense mystery novel. And so it is primarily plot focused rather than character focused. That is not generally speaking my absolute favorite type of story. Miss Clark writes this style extremely well, so it is it is done and written very very well. Again, I just tend to be more character focused, but there's nothing wrong with having a plot focused book and I wouldn't really expect anything less from a mystery novel. So one thing that this book did really interesting and really well, it was constantly switching character point of views and there'd be some times where you'd only have one or two chapters with a specific character's viewpoint. And I thought that was really interesting. That is another thing which tends to bother me in books that didn't. So I was really, really delighted about that because, again, that's something I tend to be fairly wary about. Just the constant character switching. But because it is not a character-based book and Miss Clark is not really concerned about, you know, developing super deep, super um, engaging characters, it doesn't make as big of a difference to the overall quality of the book because that's not its primary purpose. Your primary purpose is simply to discover the who done it, who actually killed Natalie Raines, who was it actually Greg, was it someone else? At the very beginning of the book, we actually get Natalie's perspective shortly before she's murdered. You are privy to a certain piece of information that tells you that Greg is highly unlikely to be the killer. However, as Natalie dies and the piece of information was extremely personal and private and part of her past, no one else was actually privy to this information and therefore you as the audience are extremely aware of this fact from the get-go. and. Unfortunately, none of the other characters in the book are. So you go through the entire trial, the entire sequence of events following this, this prosecutor who's trying to prove that Greg is in fact guilty of murdering his ex-wife because he said that she left her and his daughter alone. And it's just kind of twists at you because you as the audience are pretty certain that Greg didn't do it. 
The interesting thing is Miss Clark does not leave you completely certain if that is the case. Even though from the start you're like, I am 99% sure it's not Greg, you're not actually 100% sure because there's just that one, there's just a few little things that she hints out all the way through. You're like, did he though? I'm sure. Maybe. <laughs> Hard to tell. That being said, I think one of the things that she did really well is make you care about Greg. So even though, like I said, it's not a character-based book, you do care for the outcome of the trial. It's very tense. And because you, from the start, are pretty certain it's not Greg, it makes you feel for him even more because he's just stuck in this really bad situation. There's really no other suspects. No one really knows what's going on. And so he's just there trying to defend himself. And he's got his 14-year-old daughter, Katie, who's watching. And she's absolutely convinced that he's innocent. And she's just you know, but it's it's his daughter, it's really hard on her to watch her dad go through this trial. Her, her mom died years before it, and then her stepmom was murdered, and she knows her dad didn't do it, but her dad's on trial for it, and it's just, you're thrown into this really complicated web. It's really heartbreaking, because you know that it's just tearing this family to shreds. Um, as I said, the other main character is the prosecutor, Emily Wallace, so you went somehow both of them to succeed and you're not sure quite how that's going to work. Emily, to her credit, is um, doing her best. You know she's honest. You know she's um, going to, you know she's going to try and do the right thing, but at the same time this is the case she's been assigned to and it's the case she's going to try to win. So, as I stated, this novel switches constantly between character POV. Sometimes they're major characters like Greg and Emily, other times they're extremely minor characters that I said are only present for a chapter or two, but because the narrative, ooh, gosh, that was darker than I expected, um, <laughs> because, I'm gonna turn the light on because I need the light, one moment, I didn't think about it and then I looked in my rear mirror and realized I had no idea what I was looking at. <laughs> lovely. Anyway, but because the narrative is so tightly wound and consistent, um, it's never confusing, and I think that that's one thing that I was really impressed with, since I tend to not like a ton of character POV switches in the stories that I read. Another thing is, like I said, the book does an extremely good job of letting you figure out almost the entire mystery, but leaving just enough that it still feels satisfying at the end. I had almost the entire thing figured out. I was pretty sure I knew who it was by about halfway through the book. I mean, like I said, you know, you're hinted early on that there's something in Natalie's past that um, is directly connected to the murder that no one else knows. And so you're on high alert for this throughout the whole book and then all of a sudden you're like, I think I got it. I think I know who it is. And then just at the last second, there's just enough information that you're like, that's newly revealed that you're like, dang, that was a really good ending. <laughs> and so that's what I really like in mystery books. I love almost having the whole thing figured out, but then still that makes sense. But then having just that little bit that I didn't know that makes it a satisfying reveal at the end. All right, I have not done a smoky eye in forever, so we're going to see if I can do this without completely messing up. That's actually, that's not looking terrible. I'm okay with that. So the characters in the book are just engaging enough not to be static, particularly Emily. I think you got the most idea of her struggle, her sense of personality. Um, Emily, I think, has an interesting backstory. She's not just, you know, some random prosecutor, so she's a war widow. Her husband died two years before. She had a heart transplant, and she's pretty much kept secret. She was going through so much she didn't want anyone else's pity. She still just kind of wants to prove herself. She wants, you know, she doesn't want anyone to just view her, you know, as a pity case or to give her sympathy that she she's just kind of tired of it and I think that you know even though her situation is pretty unique these sentiments are relatable enough to make her one of the engaging main characters. Greg is also pretty interesting you don't get his point of view a lot but you do get it just enough to like again connect with him and know he's innocent but one thing that's interesting and one piece of information that comes up throughout the book is just that Greg jogged for way longer than normal during the, like during the rough time of Natalie's murder and so, and he kind of lost track of time and so he can't really 
account for that time in a technical sense and so that comes up to play a lot and then the main aspect of the trial is there is so this criminal that had been caught burglaring bur burglaring breaking into the house he said he had information about the murder and so he said that um greg had hired him to kill natalie and then at the last moment this burglar had a change of heart and decided he couldn't go through with it because he was a burglar not a murderer and like wrote him like a typewritten letter to like state that he couldn't go through with it so it basically the entire prosecution rests on the word of this criminal probably through the book you're like okay this isn't I don't know like just by like reading it you're just like this guy's obviously just trying to get a reduced sentence like this cannot be real and so you're just over here like really though really this guy but the one thing that cannot be accounted for is the fact that this guy knew about a squeaky drawer in Greg's apartment that like Greg could not account for because he was saying you know he the criminal I believe his name is Jimmy said that he saw this or heard the squeaky drawer when he went to go pick up his deposit to murder Emily there was no way he could have been Greg stated there was no way he could have been in the house as far as he knew nothing had been burgled from his house before so he had no way of like explaining how he could have discovered this but at the same time, you know, maintains his innocence from the start. And so that's the main piece of evidence in the trial that's used to kind of condemn Greg because he just cannot explain this away. So the villains to me, or the antagonists or whatever you want to call them, aren't particularly unique. As far as I'm concerned, it's pretty standard villainy reasons for villainying. Like I said, it was plot based, so none of the characters were overly well rounded, but again, that was not the point of the book, so I'm not gonna dock too many points for that, just because, again, not the point of the book. However, they did fulfill the roles decently. <laughs> Makes it sound like I'm not as thrilled with this book. Um, I did I did really enjoy it. It was an extremely fast read, so I wanna say I finished it in like two, three days. And like not consistent reading. I was just reading it on my lunch breaks at work. It was just a good quick read that I could pick up, put down, pick up, put down, pop right back in. So one thing I found kind of funny was the resolve. So most traditional story arcs, you know, you have your introduction, you have your rising action, your climax, your falling action. There was almost no falling action. You had your climax and then like a page and a half to resolve the story and then you're done. It, and it just it just ended so suddenly that I just kind of like went what <laughs> like it, again this this book did not mince words it was just like okay we're done and I just it just made me kind of chuckle because I was like oh oh okay I, I guess we're done that, that's chill like it was a good resolve I'm not complaining I'm just I think at this point I'm just so used to reading giant books that their resolves their falling action is a good four or five chapters like I'm used to reading those like granted this was a multi hundred page book but again it was just so fast paced that it was like there was no room for that extra narrative for those extra details it was all just related to the case there was no this is it we're done happy ending is here we're, we're done which I guess that's a slight bit of a spoiler there is a happy ending I mean it's like it's it's a good resolve you know you're not left annoyed you're not left wanting which I feel is like another kind of good ooh. Was a little rough. <sighs> blend it out, don't worry. I'm not. We shall blend away the mess. I need you to blend better than a hiding criminal. Yes, yes, yes. So there was actually the side plot. Emily, like I said, our main character, the prosecutor, has a stalker and the neighbor that lives across the street, extremely creepy dude, by the name of Zach and like I said he's stalking her. He had previously murdered his three ex-wives and then each time he had fled so now he has his sights set on Emily. Again that's our subplot so this is not in any way related to the murder of Natalie Raines although for a while I was like is it though because like sometimes you just never know like what the author's gonna throw at you like what they're gonna say is connected in the end 
but no this one was just it was uh your traditional subplot so it, i mean obviously everything connects in the end but yeah this guy just a straight up old-fashioned pervert creep he's a mess makes you very very worried for um emily throughout the book you're like because he's just like he wants her attention or he wants her dead like that's his that's his motive i am terrified of turning into bucky Barnes right now like i'm i mean if it gets me close to captain america that's fine but like again these aren't the most pigmented shadows in the world so it's kind of you gotta build them up so but i'm i'm i have time it's fine it's cool it's chill as long as i have time to build it it's all good like a plot sorry that was a bad joke <laughs> I hadn't read a mystery novel for a decently long time before this one so it was kind of a nice reintroduction to the genre to be honest I was pretty happy with it I was like oh yeah I do I do kind of like these like fast-paced mystery reads but it kind of gave me like a want to get back into that genre a little bit because again they're fast-paced they're plot-based and it's just it's just interesting and different than a lot of the you know, a lot of historical fictions, a lot of fantasies, they're more slow burns. So, you know, you take your time to build up your world, to build your character, to build your story arc. A lot of them are like multi, multi-novel, you know, series. So they really take their time to build up all of this. And this book is like the exact opposite. I mean, it's in there, it says what it wants to say, and then it, it's done. There's no, no messing around, there's no sequels, there's no nothing. It's just, they're, they're just done. I feel like this palette makes, like, not just because I wanted to do a smoky eye, but it's called Foiled again. All of the names are like mystery or like law-based, law, law enforcement-based, superhero. I mean, obviously it's got a superhero on the front, so. Yeah, like I said, I thought the conclusion to the book was really, really good, even though it was, as I said, just very, very fast-paced. I did really enjoy how invested I got in the story of Greg. I really wanted him to succeed. I wanted him to be free so he could be with his daughter you know I was really invested in his storyline I was invested in making sure that he stayed safe so that was done really well I think especially since the characters again were not they're not crazy well-rounded because they just they don't spend the time to build up your characters and that's okay that's the style of the novel I think that makes the accomplishment of making me in invested in the story even more more impressive because you didn't take the time to make them like super dynamic super super different super unique you just introduced these characters and said here's the situation you know he's most likely innocent you know he's probably being wrongly accused feel how you will he has a 14 year old his 14 year old will be left all on her own if if he goes to jail and so you're kind of again just in the situation where you're like well that is a sucky situation and then it goes on and on and on you're like this sucks even more for them <laughs> how bad can the, like just how bad can this family have it badly they can have it badly because i like try to twist and this does not twist and i have no idea how to remedy that so if anyone knows let me know. Goodness, I'm getting so much fallout. Definitely should have powdered that, but that's why I specifically did my eyes first. Actually, I'm going to take the shade and just blend it up into my brow bone. So, smoky eyes are dangerous, let me tell you. Like, I mean, if this is why it fits a suspense novel, because you never know if you're going to be walking the line between Bucky Barnes' raccoon or, like, like, sexy smoky eye. I feel like I'm erring more on the side of raccoon at the moment, which is less than fun. So, like I said, the book did not disappoint on a dramatic conclusion. It gets really tense really fast, which is all good in my book. Like, I think that fits for a suspense novel. Like, it's just, like, all dramatic, all of a sudden. And like I said, you know, it's it does a good job of, like, giving you a sense of danger, even though the majority of the book is, like, it takes place in a courtroom, you know? There's, like, it's not a mystery novel where you still have the killer, almost. I mean, they are. But, like, it, it does a good job of giving you an impending sense of danger, even when the situation shouldn't be dangerous, like, theoretically. Obviously, you do have the situation with Zack, the creepy stalker, 
his feels dangerous because it makes you really worried for Emily throughout the whole book. You're like, this girl does not realize how much danger she is in because it's like, I mean, there's like creepy neighbor and there, then there's like serial killer neighbor. She thinks she just has creepy neighbor. She has serial killer neighbor. Not good. <laughs> Let's get one thing straight here. We do not want serial killer neighbor on the loose, and he is very much on the loose. Obviously, the author is very good about drawing your attentions to relevant details. So, you know, everything from the flowers that are planted in creepy neighbor's front yard turn out to be important. Just a heads up. You know, everything from that to the book, like, randomly, seemingly draws your attention to like some of the viewers of the trial and you're like well why why does this matter why does this matter and then it's like oh this this might actually this might actually be relevant and then you're like oh 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 it's it's very it's very real oh gosh like just one of those types of books where you're like you don't like your attention is very very accurately drawn to the specific details you need even when you're not sure why you need them i think that's a hallmark of a good mystery suspense writer when they know how to draw your attention without you really being conscious of your attention being drawn you're just like you just like catalog the evidence and you're like oh this could be important oh oh this this is important okay so i'm gonna use this matte black shade and i'm gonna see if i can like use this just very very carefully in the outer corner like very carefully um one other thing that i thought was interesting was the comparisons in the book between Natalie, so you know your actress that was murdered and Emily Wallace the prosecutor and it's like people keep pointing out throughout the book How they're related and drawing parallels between them and their grace and the way that Emily seems like she's an actress on stage when she is a Prosecutor and like I think it's an interesting Comparison to make and there is a reason for it that's listed in the book that I thought was interesting and I picked up on it Part of the way through and I'm like I wonder if they're gonna mention this and they did it they were very very end like I said I want to be very like light with my spoilers in this one because I feel like I feel like for a suspense novel that kind of ruins the point of it if you're like if you're reviewing like if you give everything away so on the off chance that you haven't read the book yet and you might want to I don't want to give away like the final plot twists so rest assured the parallels are drawn for good reason you're wondering how long I can spend on a smoky eye and the answer is until I go from Bucky Barnes to like, I don't know why I thought Myla Kunis. Maybe, does she do a lot of smoky eyes? Myla Kunis? Whoever is known for good smoky eyes. <laughs> Not me. But it's for the sake of the book, so we must. Watch me like never try another smoky eye for like 50 years. <laughs> Alright, so while I'm attempting to draw this wing, I am not going to talk about the book because... We know how that turned out when I tried it last time. So, we're just going to like, very, very carefully drawing a wing. I did wet the brush down, so. I just felt like a red lined eye on like a super smoky eye would like kind of fit for like a suspense murdery book. You can call me wrong, but it's my video, so. That's what we're going with. I don't know, like, I kind of want to, like, I've heard so much about this author, and this is the first time I ever read one of her books. So I'm like, I'm kind of curious. I kind of want to read more of her books and see, just like, like, just see more of her. I like an author who, you know, has just kind of mastered their one genre. Like, I like, I like variety, and I also like, like someone who knows what they're good at, and, you know, just focuses on mastering that, because that's pretty chill, too. All right, I am going to attempt to fix my eyebrows, which is why I didn't like, I didn't spend too much time trying to make them perfect at the beginning because I knew that there was the possibility of the smoky eye really messing it up. So we're gonna put the brow gel and then see what needs to be fixed from there. I feel like it's pretty, it's pretty cut and dry. It's a really good, quick murder mystery. Well, not, not murder mystery, but like, well, yeah, like, I, I guess technically it's categor- like, would it be murder suspense? I don't know how to categorize books. See, this is my thing. I would- I put things in, like, 15 genres. I'm like, well, it has suspense, it has thrill, it has murder, it has mystery. So, like, I don't know. <laughs> it's basically, so. I don't know, man. Ah, <laughs> today I grabbed it wand signed up. That's good. Wand side up. Wand side up. 
I can speak words. I feel like I should have like a dramatic lash for this. I don't know. Alright, so we're just gonna like wipe off that excess real quick. Now that I'm done with my eyes again for now, I can actually talk to you guys again. Because I just... <laughs> Eyeliner, mascara, coherent thoughts don't mesh together well. Back to the real deal. Just... almost went with like this isn't full coverage concealer but I thought it would have been funny if I'd gotten for full coverage concealer I was like I went for a full coverage concealer because the media had full coverage of the story of Greg Aldrich the murder of Natalie Raines and you know the murder was covered up <laughs> how extra so I'm building it up to full coverage <laughs> laugh I'm funny this, this is what you're learning about me I use this and it got it went a little bit of my lipstick yesterday, so I'm just making sure it doesn't have any red left over. Because the last thing you want to do is conceal and then add more red on your under eye. Oh, but I just think, I don't know, I love a good murder mystery book. I think it's nice just to, you know, have your chance to get out your inner, inner detective a little bit and be like, I can figure it out before they can. Ha ha! Because you know that's the voice everyone uses <laughs> when they want to get out there inner detective. <laughs> I don't know where my concealer brush went. It's right in front of me, you know, as it would be. Oh, I conceal, I don't feel. I cannot let them know that I was the murderer of Natalie Rains. Yeah, like I said, it did, it did do a really good job of like subverting my expectations just a little bit. Like it wasn't, like I said, I mean, it, it does a good job of letting you figure out most of it and then leaving just enough that was like, Oh, oh, she went that, oh, she went that way. So, I mean, that's, that's, chill. that's cool. I mean, it's also fun to figure out the whole thing. But, I mean, when you figure out, when you let your audience figure out the whole thing, you run the risk of them, like, getting bored. Like, really? Like, you thought I wasn't smart enough to figure that out? Like, like, being kind of insulted a little bit? So, I feel like, I feel like she wrote the balancing line well. That's a tough one. Like, knowing... Like, I, I, ha I have a feeling I would be, like, a terrible mystery writer because I feel like you have to pay such close attention to so many details and keep track of them all. And then you have to be able to kind of judge how smart your audience is. You have to be able to know what they will and won't pick up on. You know, you have to, like, balance it because you have to run the risk of you have to get just so far that they won't immediately figure it out, but, like, not far enough that they'll like never figure it out and they and like none of it makes sense because like you run that risk like one of the things I hear in a lot of books and movies is like you know one extreme or the other either it was way too easy and you figure everything out or it wasn't easy enough and like suddenly the whole plot makes no sense because it seems like your answer your murderer came out of nowhere and it's like you have to like you have to build it up enough for your audience to be able to make sense of it which I feel like is really really difficult so, I mean, like, props to her for, like, just kind of mastering that. Like, that's honestly pretty impressive as far as I'm concerned. Like, I would struggle big time with that. I'm, I'm not gonna lie, that would not be my strong suit as a writer. You just have to be so, so detail-oriented for that. Let's do bronzer. That sounds like a good idea. Um, unlike Miss Clark, I don't plot... 1800 moves ahead, which is why I am a terrible chess player. Ask anyone that has ever played me in chess. The, you know, five times I've played it. One thing that I did think was interesting was Greg's friend Michael, I believe that was his name, he's the host on a show that is like it reviews like current prosecution basically and so he's reviewing this case and he's trying to remain neutral and kind of ostracizing his friend for that because he doesn't want to appear biased. It's just, it's an interesting situation. I think that's one of the things that was done really well because it, like, I'm trying to imagine, like, being in that scenario where, you know, like, one of your good friends is accused of murder and you're in the really tough position of having to try and be, like, an unbiased narrator for the media, you know, knowing that if you say one wrong thing, everyone's going to be accusing you of having this bias for him. So you're trying to remain neutral, but trying to support your friend, but trying to do all this stuff. And so I thought, even though he was a pretty minor character, I thought he was one of the more interesting ones just because he had such an interesting role in the narrative and he had such an interesting viewpoint. And 
it makes you think like, okay, if I were in that situation, how on earth would I handle that? Like, how would you handle like such a stressful situation? How do friendships survive through that at all? Again, he wasn't a main character, so we didn't get a ton of his thoughts, but just enough that it was like, okay, that was actually, that was pretty thoughtfully well done with being able to understand like where this guy is coming from in his effort to, to make sure that he's fair. It's an interesting scenario, and I'm glad that she went that direction with it. Do I dare to smoke out the bottom? Well, oh, shit, this is <laughs> the question of the hour. All right, we're gonna try like smoking out a fugitive. I should stop making jokes. If this doesn't turn out, that's what makeup wipes exist for. Oh gosh. Knocking my balance over. No big deal. Ooh, that's pretty. I'm so easily distracted by sparkles. It's not even funny. Yeah, I don't have a lot else to say, so I'm gonna try and wrap up my makeup. Do I wanna use this one, actually? Start with this one. Yeah, so I'll try to wrap it up pretty quickly, just cause I feel like, I feel like it's a very simple book. It's very straightforward. It's kind of your standard suspense thriller novel. It's not, you know, there's not a lot about it that's you know, crazy unique. It's not, you know, it's not bad in any sense of the word, so I'm not meaning that as an insult when I say that it, there was nothing crazy unique about it. I just mean it's a good, solid suspense novel. If that is up your alley, you'll probably enjoy it. It's a super fast-paced read, so like, if you just want to sit down and get through it in one reading, I think you probably can. <laughs> There's nothing too gory in it, so you don't have to worry about that, because I know sometimes you know, suspense novels can be a little rough. Like the one I'm reading right now is a little more on that side, but that's because it's, you know, more of a standard mystery that focuses more on the actual like detective side of it rather than the law side of it. So this one, it's just pretty standard. You're working it from more of a paperwork standpoint, trying to work backwards. Again, because you have a prosecutor as your main character rather than, you know, having a detective or focusing on a police department case, you know. I seem, to, I seem to have trouble with my highlighters on this channel. It's, it's just good and solid. I always feel like this isn't super pigmented and then it just like shows up. Why aren't you using a brush? Because I blend with the brush. Alrighty. Again, I think it's a pretty standard suspense read, so you don't really have to worry about... I mean, obviously there's surprises, there's the little twist ending, but that's pretty standard for that genre. Not a lot more to say. So... Basically, I just, I need to pick my lipstick and shut up. We're gonna start with a lip liner because my lips are looking a little dry. Well, the downside to reading so many suspense novels is, yeah, you do kind of tend to, like, you look at your everyday life either suddenly, like, it's really boring or suddenly, like, you're really, really grateful or, like, living in the middle of nowhere. So this is the final look for Just Take My Heart by Mary Higgins Clark. We have our dramatic smoky eye, you know, filled with intrigue and mystery, just like a suspense novel should be. We have our pop of red because, again, it's a murder mystery. I feel like the smoky blacks and the reds just feel like they're dramatic enough for this look. Got our cool toned blood red lipstick. Again, this is the look that is inspired by a pretty good, solid suspense thriller novel. If that is something that you are interested in, I would recommend it. It's just a good, solid read. What are your guys' favorite suspense thriller novels? If you want to let me know, please leave them in the comments down below. Or if you have a solid suspense thriller author, such as Miss Clark, that you would like to suggest for me to check out, let me know. Without further ado, if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. That's about it. I hope you guys have an absolutely beautiful day and that there is no creepy stalkers living in your neighborhood. <laughs> Next. You all are so wonderful. I love you all so much and that's about all I got. Bye!